This is episode 67 of Family Life Mornings. We're a morning radio show on family life. Steve, Therese, and Randy each morning on a network of stations across New York and Pennsylvania. Our podcast, some of the best moments from this week. Go ahead, Randy. Do your giraffe. (laughs) (laughs) It's a zoo in here. We know you have lots of choices. Thank you for picking Family Life Mornings. 869,463,853 869,463,853 times 73. <laughs> Most of us, to figure that out, would have to pull out a calculator, correct? Mm, yes. To get that one done. Mm, uh, a 20-year-old uh, can do it in about 26 seconds. I'm not going to give you the answer because I can't even figure out that number. But anyway, he can do this. <laughs> He's 20 years old. But here's the amazing thing about this story. When he was five years old, he hit his head really hard on, a, on the road and fractured his skull. Mm. He was not able to do things like this before, but during his uh, rehabilitation, he did things like play chess, solve puzzles to get his brain back engaged again because he had serious brain injuries uh, and eventually progressing to math problems. Whereas today he can do things like that. 869 million 463,853 times 73. He can do it in his head in less than 30 seconds. So I have another quick problem for you. I think you can figure this one out. Who could take something extremely broken and make Mm -hmm. something amazing? Mm. I think the answer is the one. Jesus is Mm -hmm. the one. Steve, Therese, and Randy, friends you can turn to on Family Life Mornings. A little fun this morning. What's your name? John Batavia. All right, John, the sign says odd hours, no pay, cool hat. What's the job? Volunteer fireman. That is oh, wow. Well done. done. I didn't get Wow. Uh, so, okay, describe what you do to us in three lines and see if we can guess your job. I, uh, I drive. Make sure people get the health care that they need. I think I know with just two clues. Are you like one of those medical motor service drivers? That's it. So are you working today? Yes, I am. You are essential. Thanks for checking in. Yep. Thanks for what you do. Appreciate it. Glory be to God. Starting your day with a smile and a dose of encouragement, too. Family Life Mornings. Have you ever lost your Bible, either one of you? Not for a long period of time. Yes. Yeah, here or there. I mean, I have one in particular that I take to church. I have, you know, a study one that's bigger that stays at home. So sometimes it gets left in the car or one time I found it in the church lost and found like a week later. But to have your Bible gone for 36 years, you probably think it's gone forever. Well, Adam flew to San Francisco way back. The flight attendant picked up his Bible because he left it behind. She tucked it away because she knew it was kind of valuable, right? But maybe she tucked it a little too far away because when she just moved, she was unpacking and she found the Bible and she was able to get it back to this guy (laughs) who is now a pastor. So I'm thinking somewhere along the way, he probably got a new Bible. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) They're here to wake you up, pick you up and lift you up. Steve, Therese, and Randy on Family Life. A friend you can turn to. I used to be cool. That was what the bumper sticker said on the back of the minivan and uh, made me laugh a little bit. But it got me thinking, too. I used to be what? Sherry in Angelica said I used to be a follower. Now she's a leader. Susan in Delhi says I used to be fat. I've kept off 100 pounds for 15 years. Way to go. And then Holly in Kane says... I used to be lost. Mm, oh, so yeah. good, right? Yeah, who's this? Good morning. My name is Bruce. I live in Elmira, New York. I used to be hairy, <laughs> but I have no hair. Oh. <laughs> I pulled up in between the three-lane highway one time, waiting for the light that seemed like it would never end. And, ev- and everybody's kind of looking around, so I pulled out my wife's hairbrush, and I have no <laughs> hair. <laughs> and, I be- and I began to brush my hair, and I looked to the left, and it- the person that left were looking and laughing, and they hit their husband who was driving the car, and they looked, and I looked to the right, and the people to the right were, were laughing, and I was just acting like I had all kinds of hair. Right oh, you up. sound like a joy giver. <laughs> <laughs> he is good. Watch out for the wind today. It kind of messes up your... Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's my eyebrows. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Right, 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 right. <laughs> this is Family Life. A friend you can turn to. It might be the world's greatest motivator. They say it works for kids. 
works for teenagers, works for adults. It works better than money. In fact, this will motivate people to work harder and reach their goals faster. I love the way they did this study. They broke workers into four groups. Now, one group, they said, you're not getting any sort of reward at all. Another one said, you're going to get like a positive text from the boss. A third group was supposed to get money, but this fourth group outperformed them all because they were promised that when you're done, you get pizza. Oh, uh huh. <laughs> yeah. More than anything. Uh, we had sports leagues right here at Family Life, and high school teams would, from the area, would come and compete, and we're playing in a basketball league. And uh, my team that I was coaching made it to the championship game, and, and I thought we were the better team, but the other player had one fella on it who was just outstanding. He, by far and away, was the best player in the league. And we're losing at halftime, and I'm trying to encourage my guys and telling them to do this and do that, and nothing seemed to work. We're still losing starting the fourth quarter. And about two minutes into the quarter, I'm thinking, what can I do to get these guys to start gelling? Called the timeout. They came over, and I looked at them, and we didn't go over any strategy. I just said, guys, if we win this game, we're going out for pizza, and it's on me. You can eat as much as you want. (laughs) Guess who won the game? (laughs) Yeah, see? It works. (laughs) If it's too early for you to start thinking about real life, it's okay. You can hang out with us as long as you want. This is Family Life Mornings. Mark my words and mark my toddler. You see this? This is a Sharpie marker, right? I see it. I see and I'm going to write on myself. Have you ever had a child write on themselves with Sharpie? Well, mm. I've, I'm guilty of it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Not on purpose, but sometimes yeah. you get a mark on there. You get it on you, and right. you're like, oh, now we can't go to church for three months till that comes <laughs> off. But, <laughs> but then you go, now we got to go to church. Yeah, How right, do I right, get it right. off? Well, it's a tip from Therese. All you right. take this highlighter. Okay. And I wasn't sure this was going to work, but okay. I wanted to be able to show you guys in real time. Go. So Here I chose go. a yellow highlighter because uh-huh. it blends in you the most okay. with skin. You right. cover the Sharpie with the highlighter, right? right? right. And then... You just wipe it away, and it's like lighter. And you could do it again, put a little more highlighter on there, and eventually it'll take off all the Sharpie. And the good news is, like, if you don't have a yellow one and use a bright pink one, you're going to be able to see your toddler no matter where they are, which means they're less likely to do things like get into the Sharpie. (laughs) You know, and so yeah, you take the highlighter and then you wipe it away. And then the last step is you take all the sharpies in your house Uh and you lock them up for 18 years. Oh, that's good. (laughs) That's the tip from Therese right there on Family Life. A new day, a new start, a God who never changes. You're waking up with Family Life mornings. Well, everybody's like getting back in the swing of getting up for school. A lot of alarms being set a lot earlier than they have been in like the past six months. And so we thought it'd be fun to hear kids imitating their parents trying to wake them up. So we've got Joy from Montrose. Get up, little Joy, get up. Get up, it's time for school. Get up, little Joy, get up. Oh, I have a better idea. So do, the, do, the same, do the same song in his voice. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Hmm. Hmm. Get up, Blue Joy, get up. It's time to get up for school. <laughs> How many times does he sing it before you take all your blankets and cover your head? <laughs> uh, only about once or twice. <laughs> oh, so you're gracious to him. Uh, what grade are you in? I'm in eighth grade. Uh, have a great school year. Yep. We can't always take your call, but we will see your text if you send a message to 888-413-4156. This is Family Life Mornings. Audrey and I have been brought to tears three different times of this fellow by the name of Brandon Leak. He's on a show called America's Got Talent, which, you know, mm-hmm. the sh- it's been on for years. And mm-hmm. right. singers and jugglers and all kinds of things. He does the spoken word. He calls himself a poet. He's actually an English teacher. And so he cool. three different times he's been on, and the most recent was just a couple of nights ago. Uh, and the subject matter, and he has like four minutes or so to get mm-hmm. up there and just speak. And, and there he's talking about recently, and we're going to play a little clip of it here, about uh, having an absent father. Okay, so Brandon Leak from America's Got Talent, and it's not going to do it justice because you have to hear the whole thing. But we'll tell you how to yes. do that in a second. But here's Brandon Leak. For 25 years, I cried into pillow sheets wondering why you left me. 
wondering what I could have done to have earned your love or how I pushed you so far away. Your absence like a flame found home in the kindling of my insecurities and my mind became a wildfire. And as I ascended in age, my sorrow turned to rage because I wanted to move on, but I simply couldn't turn the page. Or I didn't want to. Because somehow being angry with you still made me feel close to you. And despite our lack of history, Tyrone, I've come to learn that pain, like secrets, can only control you if you hold them within. So I've laid down these woes at the altar of Christ just so I can tell you this. I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you so I can finally be free. No longer shackled to my misery because... This situation is so much bigger than you and me. This right here is generational healing because I'm getting married soon. And I want our first chapter together to be started off on the right page with you by my side as I marry my bride, because Tyrone, for the first time ever, I can honestly say, I love you and I actually mean it. So will you be there for my biggest day ever? Sincerely, your son, Brandon. Whew, mm. I hear that, and I just think, mm. who is it that I need to offer forgiveness right. to? Who is it that I need to take the anger and say, you know what? I love you, too. Right. You can only do that through Christ. It's so amazing. If you want to see that whole four minutes, and I'll tell you, you have goosebumps. Uh, there's no way you won't. Just go to Facebook.com slash Family Life Mornings. The change happens at the altar of Christ. While you're packing your lunch, they're packing your mornings with a whole lot of fun. It's Steve, Therese, and Randy on Family Life. A friend you can turn to. Okay, now, here's the thing. There's zoo in Tacoma that uh, gives the animals a video message to you, encouragement. We obviously yeah. can't do that, the video. It's radio. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we're going to do the next best thing where uh, you give us your favorite zoo animal. We give you an encouraging message. And it's absolutely free. What's your name? Uh, this is Charlene from Albion. Charlene, what's your favorite zoo animal? You know, <laughs> I love the sloth. Oh, the, the sloth. I love oh. the sloth. Yes. Therese, yes. do you do a good sloth? Do you do I, a good... Okay, hold on. Therese I'm is going to do her sloth. She does a great sloth. Here we go. Here's your message. <laughs> hold on. Uh, okay, here's okay. that. I talk sloth. Here's the interpretation. <laughs> I think, one, wait, one more time, right at the end there, right at the end. What did you say at the end? Okay, right there, that part, yeah. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's what the sloth says to you today. Okay, well, I would have loved to see her do that. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. And none of that, none of that weird morning show smell. <laughs> my name is Rachel, and we live in Elmira. What's your favorite zoo animal? Well, my daughter's favorite zoo animal is a giraffe, and her birthday is today. Oh, Randy! <gasps> Ra- I have seen I have seen Randy do the birthday giraffe thing. Go yes. ahead, Randy, do your giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> This, unfortunately, our giraffe <laughs> is sick today. The giraffe is like, I got to go to the chiropractor. Wait a minute. But hold on. Wait a minute. I, what was that last part again, Randy? <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. okay. Here's the interpretation. Be strong and courageous in the Lord. That's what he says to you today. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. You're welcome. You have a great... Don't forget the cotton candy on the way out. Steve, <laughs> Teresa, and Randy. Because you can never have enough friends. We're Family Life, a friend you can turn to. Churches have been challenged during the pandemic. Some have even had to shutter their doors yeah. uh, around the country. However, there is a church in Pennsylvania who, uh, yeah, they had to shutter their doors. But they were so desperate, desperate in a good way, desperate to get together as a congregation, as the church, the people. So you don't have to meet in a building. So what did this pastor do? Hmm. Hey, anybody got any kayaks, canoes, <laughs> paddle boards? <laughs> Let's go to Bald Eagle State Park. And they did. Wow. The church gathered in the water on all those things, and they oh, had God. church preaching there out on the water. Yeah. Huh. I'm thinking like the perfect sermon for that. Yeah. You, know, you could do Noah, you could yeah. do Jonah, so you could do the parting of the Red Sea. <laughs> you know? The topic could be baptism. There right, you go. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, desperate for that church to get together. When you wake up with family life, you get the encouragement you need to start the day. Well, COVID-19 has caused us to think outside the box in many instances, and that was the case for school teachers 
Richard Gray Eaton. He put his creative thinking as well as his skills together to make social distancing easier in his classroom. And now he has a patent pending for his safety social station. It's a wooden platform that lifts a student's desk three feet into the air off of the floor. And uh, that makes the social distancing easier. It puts them further away from the next person who is seated on the floor. And it's... Like I said, he's got a patent pending now because other people are interested in it. But, Steve, i got to think you're kind of like me in this. If you're a high school student and you walk into his classroom, which desk do you want to sit at? One that's on the floor or one that's going to be three feet up? I'm I'm going up. I want the bird's eye view. I feel bad for every teacher, though, who's always like, Eyes forward, feet on the ground. Yeah. That's right. Well, yeah. Except for you. Yeah. You don't have to put your feet on the ground. It's the only way I'd reach the top of the class. Oh. Oh. Fun conversation, good music, and something to think about. Family Life Mornings.